If your adult child needs a safe space to avoid offensive words, you failed as a fucking parent. If anything in my seminar offends you, blame your parents for raising a pussy. Welcome back, everybody. So, the couple things I need to explain. So, now that it's running right, there's another thing we need to do. Because these little 50cc engines, unfortunately, they don't put out much RPM range at all out the hole. I'm going to show you how to get past that because we need the RPMs to climb as high as we can, as quickly as we can. And there's a very simple modification that you can do to make this happen. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But first, I'm going to show you what it sounds like stock so that you have an idea of how much the RPM range has actually changed. Because I don't know if you know this, there's gears in there and those gears are going to change gears automatically when the CVT opens and closes to a certain point. But what we need is max power out the hole to turn a track because there's a lot more friction on a track than there is on a tire on a flat surface. So what we need here is to create more RPM value. And I'm going to show you how to make your scooter get a higher RPM value for free. So let's do that. This would be something I would do if you were worried about your scooter not being able to keep up with traffic or you needed it to get up to speed faster. You can do this to pretty much any of the 50ccs through 150cc scooters. But because this one has a, such a low RPM range, it ticks off really slow. And what we're looking for is high RPM value because that'll get that track turning and that's what we need it to do. We need it to turn quickly. That way it'll create some horsepower and start getting up there. You know, just like a four cylinder. If you start off low and, a, and, and it has no power until it reaches a certain RPM range and then the power band kicks on, that's what we're going to do with this. We're going to try to access the power band early so that it won't have a problem turning the track with the weight of the scooter and the rider. So let me show you what this thing sounds like. First, stock. We'll do a stock, just give it hell, and then I'll do one after we modify it and let you listen to what that sounds like. Let's go. Okay, from a dead sit still, watch how bad it walks out. This is how low the RPM range is. You ready? There's the power band. Alright, so that was the power band on the stock. Now let's modify it so that that power band climbs a lot faster. Let's take it back and make a quick, simple little modification to it. Alrighty guys, let's strip this CVT case off real fast. Well, I hope your case is a little easier to get off than mine was. Mine was a pain in the butt. So you're going to need an impact wrench for this. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty hard job to do. So. There's one. Should be a washer. Come on. Get off here. There we go. Washer out. And this. We'll set all this on top of each other. Like so. And we don't lose the formation of how it should be. We're going to remove this guy here. May have to squeeze the clutch to get this loose. So that's what I'm going to do. Good old squeezy of the clutch. <sighs> okay. Now we'll pull this as close as I can together. And we'll shove the belt down as far as I can. So when I go to put all this back together, I can just slide it on there really easily. And now we're going to remove this off of here so I can flip it over. Ah, there we go. I'm going to leave the space in there, but we're going to flip this over because i got to show you what's inside here. Should be rollers. Yep. Okay. And what I'm going to do should be, what, six of them? Six? Should be six, maybe. Yeah, six. All right, so... See these rollers? What I'm going to do is remove this one. <sighs> if I can get this guy out of here. Come on. 
Come on. Get out of there. Pain in my butt. All right, and this one. So I'm going to keep a tripod of them in there. I'm removing three, and I'm leaving three. So just take three. Make sure these stay even, okay? This is going to change the RPM range of the scooter on takeoff. Also, top end. Should make your scooter go faster. If you do this, ladies and gentlemen, be sure you're changing your oil every 1,000 miles because this is going to make your engine rev up a lot. So I'm just going to set these aside, these rollers. I'm going to put the back back on this again. Let's see here, like so. I can get this on there. Come on. There we go. Okay. So the back's back on. We're going to slide this back on here all the way to the back, and then we're going to shove the center piece back in there again where that goes, like that. I'm going to slide the belt up and over this, and we're going to piece this back together. Just how it came out, it's going back together the same way. Make sure your teeth have a bite. Make sure those went over those teeth. you got to get these over the teeth. You see these teeth right here? It's really easy to screw this up if you don't get these on that teeth. So once that's on there good like it should be, then you can put your washer. You can see this is seated very well. It's pushing against there fully. It's seated all the way. You can easily bend those teeth and screw that up if you don't do it correctly. And then we take our 17 and tighten it back down again. Should be plenty. There we go. And now if we spin this, the belts come loose just like this. You'll see the belt will come back up. There we go. Belt's back to normal. Make sure our starter gear is in place. We're going to grab this case. We're going to hook up this line that we took off right here. And we're going to pop this guy back on in there. All right, let's see if we created too much RPM range or just perfect. If it winds out and doesn't want to shift, and it just keeps winding out, then we need to add weight, remove the ones that are in there, and put a little bit heavier ones in there. But we're still going to try to stick with three of them. So let's see what happens. This is tuning at its finest. You ready? So I'm going to hit it, and we're going to see how high the RPM range jumps. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah, we got a lot more RPM range. Okay, however, however, it is revving very high and it's creating weird shift points. So what we need to do is remove the rollers that are in there and put three slightly heavier ones and I think I have some, so. All right, so I've got this set for grams. Uh, these were the ones that came in it and they weigh five grams a piece. These are 12 grams. They're heavy. I don't know if I want to put 12s in there. Let's see what else we got. I've got some from some other scooters. I'm looking for like 6.5. 5.5 might do it. However, that has some really gnarly flat spots on it. Is that the same thing? I want 6s. That's what I'm looking for, 6s. Let's see what else I got here. See, these might be good. How many of these do I have? Yeah, okay. So, do I have another one? I should have another one. Yeah! There we go. 6.5. 6.4. 6 6.6. .6. These will work. Alright, so, we're only going to up the weight a little bit. Uh, 12s are a little too big. I'm not going with 12s. And these ones are way too small. I've got more 12s, but those are pretty heavy. I would probably put those in a 150cc. I don't know if I'd put them in a 50cc. Might be a bit too much weight. Um, 
but these ones might work perfect. That's that's a considerable amount of change. So 20 grams, 15 grams. So we are going to change the shift variation just a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I think I think ideally that's probably the way to go. Uh, I don't like I said I don't want to make that big of a jump. That's a pretty pretty big jump. These are fives. So and these are five fives. So that's only a little bit more. We'll try these and see how we do. We just want to go a little bit heavier. So we'll go to six fives, six 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 fives. Yeah, six fives. So let's bump it up to six fives instead of just fives. We'll see if that makes the RPM range difference that we're looking for. All right, so the fives have been pulled out and the 6.5s have just been put in. So I'm gonna piece all this back together. We're gonna to take it out, do it again if I don't like it. Then what we're gonna end up doing is probably ordering a totally different set of rollers. I might take it up to about eight grams. I'll order a set of three or, or a new set of eight gram rollers and we'll see where we end up. We're looking for just the perfect RPM range. 6.5 might do it. Fives to 6.5, that might make the difference we're looking for. I needed to catch faster, so let me put this back together now. All right, 6.5s, here we go. Oh, that is a huge difference. Oh, this thing pulls like a freight train now. Oh my God. Oh boy, this scooter's very fast now. Okay, we gotta slow down. <laughs> All right, well, we found the perfect RPM range for it. I bet this thing will go about 45 now easily from that slow 30. It pulls hard now. Yep, all right, I found the perfect RPM range. That is just beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, this thing pulls hard now, real hard. Oh, it's like, it's like it just kicks in and starts to pull really hard. That is the power band coming on. There we go. This thing's a rocket ship now. All right, so we removed all of the stock rollers and only put three back in that were 6.5 gram rollers. And off cam here, I actually just took off the air box and went ahead and switched out to a pod filter because it was still running a little bit rich and it needed more air because uh, it had a ton of fuel. So we're good to go now. This thing is a rocket ship. I'm going to have to build a uh, bigger mud flat for back here because obviously we don't want that air box. Or I may put a tube going up into the seat, into the storage compartment, and then put the air box in there. That might be what I end up doing, but... Like I said, right now I'm just going to actually uh, put a larger piece of plastic. I'll, I'll uh, screw it to this from the back side. That way the nails or anything I put in there doesn't go into the tire. Bigger piece of plastic to keep snow from flying up when the tracks are on there into the air system. Um, and see if that works first. If not, then I'll go ahead and just get a tube and route the uh, air filter right under the seat. And then we won't have any more problems at all. But I, I'd like to test a few things first. So there you go, stock air box is off there. That'll leave it cool so everybody can see the track without the air box on there and all that stuff. And uh, this thing's a ripper chip. She's ready to go now. This thing terrorizes the road. It's quick, it's nice and fast, has a great RPM range. Just remember, change your oil every thousand miles. So, and if you're gonna be using this in the snow, I would change your oil every 500, I don't know. I would change it every 300 to 500 miles if you're gonna be snow riding it, because that's a lot more wear and tear on the engine, just to be clear. You want really good oil if you're gonna be going down the road that I'm trying to take you guys on. Uh, you'll be wanting to do oil changes pretty often. Also, your belt, always have a reserve belt with you uh, in case you have to switch it. Because, uh, like I said, tracks are probably gonna put a lot more wear and tear on the CVT. So, you might be wearing out clutch components and uh, stuff a lot faster than you normally would. Tracks just are way more friction than a tire. A tire is round and it meets a flat surface and it's just designed to go. Tracks are going to require more power to turn, which means more wear and tear on the engine. So I wouldn't do this with a scooter that you ride every day. I would do this with a play around scooter that you have. So anyways, guys, I hope that helps. And uh, you got a little bit of the tuning, tuning guide on how to make these things a little bit faster. Perfect for if you want to do hill climbs or you just want a faster takeoff with your scooter without having to do 
huge modifications and pay a shop a bunch of money. You can do all this yourself. It's very easy. So, all right, guys, that was part two. Now we're just waiting on the tracks to show up, and then we're going to start designing that for the rear end.